the Allen Telescope Array, the only array built from the ground up to search for alien intelligence, is nestled between the Northern California mountains and miles of farmland. Four researchers live full-time at the ATA, conducting cutting-edge science in the middle of nowhere. What's it like to live there? And what's a typical day? That's what I'm going to find out. Hey, this is Margaret Reeb. I'm a senior manager at the SETI Institute, and I am on my way to the Allen Telescope Array. I am in the nearest town, which is about 30 minutes away. I just stocked up on groceries, and I'm going to head to the telescopes, so I'll catch you there. The ATA is situated at the Hat Creek Radio Observatory in Northern California's Lassen National Park. It consists of 42 radio dishes arranged over one kilometer of land. SETI science focuses on listening for radio waves because they are a great way to send information over large distances, and they pass through the dust and gas of space at the speed of light. Using multiple dishes rather than a single large telescope allows scientists to observe more than one area of the sky and listen on different radio frequencies simultaneously. Thanks to a generous donation from Franklin Antonio, the antennas are now being upgraded to cover 1,000 to 15,000 megahertz with improved sensitivity and reliability. I arrived late one evening in early November to meet the researchers who call the ATA home. Dr. Alexander Polak is the Science and Engineering Operations Manager at the ATA. Sarah Schultz is Alex's research assistant who works on ATA hardware. Dr. Wael Farah is a postdoc researcher and resident astronomer at the ATA. Parnav Primnap is Wael's research assistant who works on software and data feeds. It's dark outside right now, otherwise I'd give you a tour, but I'm about to meet Alex and the rest of the crew to have some ramen. It took about an hour to get our food order in because we are out in the middle of nowhere, but that's going to make it all the more delicious. Over ramen, they discussed an anomaly in the array's beam pattern and what could be the cause. The team has been working hard ever since to upgrade the antennas and data feeds. After dinner, everyone tucked in for bed. Ooh, it's coffee time, 7.38 in the morning, and it's still pretty dark outside, but I will report back later. Bye! The sun has just come up. Um, I was warned about mountain lions and bears last night, but I think we're okay since the sun is up. And I thought I'd give you just a brief tour of some of the living quarters here at the Allen Telescope Array. So let's take a look. This is the Hat Creek House. It's the guest house here at the Allen Telescope Array. It's where I'm staying and anybody who comes up who's a SETI Institute employee for a visit gets to stay in this beautiful house. And we can pan over here, there's a beautiful yard, to the Lassen House. And this is where Alex Polak, one of the full-time scientists here at the ATA, lives. There are three other full-time scientists who call the Allen Telescope Array home, and they live in dormitories down the street. I am all dressed, I've had my coffee, and now I'm ready to make the short drive from the guest house to the main building where a lot of the science happened. The team has a full day ahead. First on deck, Alex and Sarah will repair a part in Antenna 2E. Over the past couple of days, the team has noticed temperature spikes inside this antenna, which means a part is starting to fail and they need to replace it before it damages the dish. So let's go on inside. This is the main office building. The scientists who work on site and live on site have their offices here. I find everyone, even the caretakers, in the observatory room. This room has live feeds of data from the dishes, as well as desks for the researchers. Once we've had a chat, Alex and Sarah head to the clean room, a shed in the middle of the array where they repair equipment and store materials. 
we need to pick up parts in order to do the repair on 2E. And we got to say hello to a pair of mule deers along the way. This is fun. So what are you guys up to? We're trying to repair a broken antenna. Um, so we monitor all of the data of the feeds. <coughs> Sorry. It's cold. So we, yeah, we monitor all of the data of the feeds. And one of the feeds showed that the diaphragm pump, which is that one, is about to fail. And so we need to replace it. Um, because that one is part of the vacuum system, which, hold, which keeps the feed cold. And if the vacuum fails, the feed warms up and then we have to do more maintenance and um, it can damage parts. So keeping those feeds cold 24 seven is quite a high priority. So we try to replace that while the feed is in the feed um, and while everything is running so that we don't have to switch anything off. Basically kind of an open heart surgery. Oh my gosh. How often do you have to do open heart surgery on antennas? Um, not that often. But it's kind of, it's basically, there's an old version of that one, which is in a lot of those feeds, and they're not very reliable. So we replace basically those with a newer version, but because they're fairly expensive, we use the old ones until they die. So we're approaching the surgery patient. It's antenna 2E. And it's pointing down now because as Whale said, it's not currently being used for a survey. Alex and Sarah repair antennas as much as they can while the antennas are still running. This ensures as little downtime for the dishes as possible. Alex lovingly calls this open heart surgery. Before we open the antenna, Alex presses a button to ensure it doesn't move while we're working on it. Then he opens a hatch on the bottom and Sarah climbs inside to open the box holding the machinery. The red item Alex is pointing out is the vacuum pump that needs replacing. He and Sarah also need to replace a tiny piece on the circuit board. The whole process takes about 30 minutes, not counting the time it took us to gather tools or head back into the observatory room so Alex can check the feeds to see if the repair was successful. It's the moment of truth. Alex sends a few commands to the antenna, and after a moment, things are looking good. The readings are now normal. Yeah, I think we might be in business. The team will continue to monitor the temperature in this antenna to ensure everything is running smoothly, but it looks like the open heart surgery was a success. While I've been with Alex and Sarah, Wael and Pranav have been working on some of the code. Remember the anomaly in the beam patterns that they were talking about over Raman last night? Well, as is typical, when Wael and Pranav were looking into that issue, they found a whole different challenge. What we're trying to do right now is not really processing the data, but more more or less trying to see if the data makes sense. Just capture it. Just, just, yeah. Yeah, just, just look at it, see yeah. if, it's, if it's seeing the sky or not. Um, essentially something, that, something that's similar to what we have right there. So I'll, I'll quickly show this. Maybe Prana, do you want to you yeah. do this? They want to find the best way to take a quick snapshot of incoming data, specifically the spectra the antennas are observing in the sky. But something in the code isn't pulling the snapshot correctly. They try quite a few things to get to the bottom of this issue, and then there's a stroke of genius. So, okay, let's do something stupid. Let's let's just let's do let's load uh, the eight bit mode. I I don't know if, if the boards are gonna like this, but let's try. This idea was in fact not stupid. I think so far it looks okay. Okay, I'm gonna do maybe a few more. Okay, so yeah. just to All right, make sure. So was well, well, right? Um, no, I'm, uh, th that just tells how bad astronomers are in writing software. Um, but, but on my defense, it, it, was, it was something I commented out and like replaced a couple of times. So I knew, or the, the old me knew that there was a problem, um, but I never went back to the code to double check that it was solved. And, and now it is. It came back. Like me, so, <laughs> <laughs> like us, I mean, well, 
Anyway. The solution was found, which the is what's was found. most important. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out. After a day of antenna repairs and code challenges, the team heads to Alex's house for dinner and a board game. Since this team is working in such a remote area, they spend a lot of time together and often have meals and play games in the evening. It is Sunday morning. It's a beautiful day here in Hat Creek and I am headed home. So thank you to all of the scientists at the Allen Telescope Array who let me shadow them during their important work and cook them dinner as a thank you. And thank you for tuning in and learning more about the ATA and what goes on behind the scenes. Hopefully I'll have another one of these vlogs for you soon. I'm signing off. This is Margaret.